Domine participate in et spiritus sancti. Amen. Uh, so what do or what does the governor of a city, a married man, a Franciscan friar, and a military leader all have in common? They were all St. John of Capistrano. Right? So he had quite, quite an, an adventurous life. Um, he started out, uh, he was born in the year 1386 in Capistrano, Italy. And uh, intelligent and capable, good upbringing. And he was appointed governor of the city of Perugia when he was only 26 years old. Um, at that time, there were some rebellious factions in the surrounding areas. And um, uh, John Capistrano, uh, being the governor of a city, being a good governor, went to try to quell these rebellions that were happening around um, his city. Uh, but instead of uh, succeeding, he was actually thrown in prison by these uh, rebellious factions. Um, now, as usual, what the saints do is uh, when they have met with misfortune, uh, they don't um, uh, you know, blame God or get angry or, or give up, but rather uh, he made use of it. So John Capistrano, during his time in prison, uh, thought greatly about the purpose of life, his immortal soul, and he also began to study theology. Um, so he began to pray a great deal as well, and he had a vision of um, St. Francis of Assisi who um, uh, told him that he needed to join the Franciscan order, and that had been founded about 150 years previously. Uh, so this, this had a great impact on him, and, and he was released a short time later, and he really thought about that vision, you know, become a Franciscan, uh, but there was just one problem, he was already married. Um, so uh, um, he, uh, he and his wife, however, had, had, they had had no children, and so with, uh, he obtains her permission, and they separate, and then he, he does indeed uh, renounce his politi political career, the governorship, and uh, joins the Franciscan order in the year 1416. Uh, so quite, quite, quite a different career change, a married man, a political career, and now being a simple uh, Franciscan monk. Uh, but he showed as much ability um, uh, for the church as he had shown as, as a politician, uh, being a brilliant student and a capable preacher. And after nine years of study, he was ordained a priest for the Franciscans and then began a, um, an extraordinary apostolate of uh, preaching penance and reform for the next 30 years. Um, as I mentioned, the Franciscans founded, actually it was more like 200 years previously, uh, the Franciscans' uh, order had grown lax, as orders generally do, and uh, ha as had the Catholic faithful in general. Uh, so St. John preached on the importance of, of penance and reform of life, uh, especially for the monastic orders, and for these next 30 years, he traveled through Italy, Germany, Bohemia, Austria, Hungary, Poland, and Russia. Uh, preaching uh, to great effect and establishing uh, numerous communities of Franciscans. And so, I mean, imagine somebody just traveling through all those, all those um, uh, countries. I mean, that would be, that would be pretty impressive um, these days. This is, this is the 1400s, right? I mean, try, go, 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 go from Italy to Russia in the 1400s. You're traveling on foot. Right. That, that, is, that is incredible, or, or, or on a horse. So, and then not, not to mention uh, having to speak Italian, German, Bohemian, Austrian, hung, you know, Hungarian, Polish, and, and then so on. So just the ability of, of these, these, uh, just the average person these days was really, really oh. tremendous. Now, St. John Capistrano was assisted in his efforts by St. Bernardine of Siena, himself a Franciscan, and, and the two of them were, were, were instrumental in initiating that reform uh, of the Franciscan order. Um, it says, now, when he was not engaged in preaching and reform, he was writing tracts against the heresies of his day. And in the mid-1400s, there were plenty of heresies abounding. Um, the Great Western Schism had just ended in 1416. That was when he had uh, up to three claimants to, to, be, to the papacy at a time. And that had, that had gone on for about, um, let's see, 40, you know, 35, 40 years, something like that. And the Great Western Schism uh, occurred just two years after the end of the Avignon Papacy. And that itself was 70 years long of the popes being um, um, in, in, in Avignon, France, um, not in Rome, and, and pretty much controlled by the French king. So 
over a, uh, over a hundred years of, of disarray in the papacy, you can imagine what, what, the, what the overall church looked like. Uh, the, the, the faithful were in disarray. Heresies were, were, were cropping up everywhere uh, because the, the, the bishops and especially the pope were all over the place. That is their job. The, the pope and the bishops, their job is to safeguard the faith. They are to hand it on. They are ha hand on tradition, uh, preserved, uh, unstained in its purity. And, and, and the only changes that they should make are they, they make what is already there more explicit, more clear, and, 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 and uh, um, uh, more developed. Uh, so this had, not, this had not been done uh, uh, for over 100 years, and so the result was that, that mass confusion of the church during those times, which would, of course, eventually end up uh, leading to the Protestant Revolution. Uh, right? Martin Luther uh, was, was a Catholic priest, and he was so scandalized at the bad example, the bad example of those prelates you know, and, and the church that, that, that he went off the rails, as, as sadly we know. So, so um, John Capistrano is, is in the midst of all this, you know, preaching reform, uh, writing against heresies. Um, he was being sent on, on diplomatic missions by the Pope, all of which to great, uh, great success. Uh, but in addition to these internal problems in Europe, there was also the external threat of Muslim aggression. Uh, these were always seeking to invade, ways to invade and conquer Europe. And in the year 1453, uh, the, the, the Turkish Muslims finally succeeded in attacking and taking Constantinople. And that was the last part of the Roman Empire, which fell in 1453. Uh, the, the Western Empire, the Western Roman uh, Empire, that fell in 476 to the barbarian uh, Goths. Uh, but the Eastern Empire, Constantinople, that was still considered uh, uh, the, the continuation of ancient Rome. Uh, people don't realize this, but, but Rome was founded uh, uh, in 27 BC, and its, its catalog is falling in 1453. So uh, an empire which lasted uh, nearly 1,500 years finally ended uh, there um, with, with the taking of Constantinople. Uh, and that, that left, that left the, uh, the Turks in control of Constantinople, and, and they used that as a base of operations to try to invade Europe. And so Pope Calixtus III, the next year, asked St. John uh, to preach a crusade, raise an army to defend Europe from further attack. And, and you can imagine the difficulty is, is everybody in Europe is already at each other's throats. I mean, this is, this is nearing the 1500s when you'd have the religious wars, which would tear Europe apart. Uh, so St. John Capistrano, he has, he has uh, success. He raises 50,000 soldiers, and he marched them to um, uh, Belgrade, Serbia, which was currently under attack. Uh, but these were not professional soldiers. He didn't really, he didn't, it wasn't, you know, he didn't have the backing of kings and so on. These were mercenaries. These were men who used to be soldiers. These were kind of volunteers. So they were poorly equipped, um, but highly motivated. So um, it's, it's, it's interesting, St. John Capistrano goes, goes into battle armed with the, the, the shield of faith, right, and, and the sword of truth, uh, but that's it. Um, he was assisted by the Hungarian, I think it was the Hungarian king, and um, they ended up uh, uh, winning a, a, a decisive victory over the Turks uh, kind of by accident. Um, the, 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 um, they had given their soldiers orders. They went up and, and the city of Belgrade was, was besieged. They managed to find a way. They broke through the lines and were able to uh, bring the, the city um, much needed supplies, but they still had to mount that assault. Um, well, they had given the soldiers orders, um, you know, stay, stay on our battle lines and, and don't go forward. Uh, but a group of soldiers went forward and they started harassing the enemy lines. I think it says they were actually looking for uh, loot. They were looking for, for um, unguarded positions where they could, they could steal some uh, um, supplies. Uh, so this, these, these soldiers go forward against orders that which they weren't supposed to do. Uh, John Capistrano goes forward to call them back and uh, a force thinks that he's going on the attack so they join him and he ends up you know, leading an attack by accident, uh, just going forward in the city. Uh, the other commander did a flanking attack that the Turks are completely surprised and, and, and the city falls. So uh, kind of an interesting um, little, uh, uh, didn't expect to go into a full frontal assault, but he did and, and was victorious. That's, that's how God works. So they, they managed to um, uh, drive the Turks back from the city of Belgrade. 
um, uh, Europe was was saved at, at that point from from that attack. And and had they not done that, right? The, there's so many times in history where Europe could have just totally fallen, and, and, and hist history would totally been different. Uh, but it's it's incidences like this uh, that, that that kept and preserved Western civilization and 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 Catholic civilization for for that matter as well. Uh, well, St. John Capistrano, um, and this is in 1453, and it, recall he was born in 1386, so he's, he's 70 years old at this time, and um, the, the effort and the strain of that, that was, was quite significant, and he ended up falling victim uh, to the Black Death uh, just the following year, uh, 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 consummating a life given in service to God. Uh, so, uh, um, as, as so often, you know, we, we have... Um, uh, an example in the past of a church which was in disarray, much like today, uh, but God always raises up saints uh, in, in such times. And, and look at what St. John Capistrano, look at how God uh, uh, drew him to this life of, 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 of preaching, uh, of preaching penance and reform, of, of ending up saving Europe from the downfall, from invading Turks. H how did God set him on this life uh, th this wonderful life. It was through uh, um, that early, what well, we would consider a disaster. St. Governor Capistrano, Governor John, goes on a mission and he fails. He's supposed to um, be able to enter into a diplomacy, diplomatic relations, and, and work out a peace agreement, and he's thrown in prison. He's in prison for, for I think, one or two years. Um, anybody would consider that, oh, God, where are you? How could you let this happen to me? I'm in prison. You know, what's going on? It was a personal disaster, uh, but, but as the saints always do, they, they, they turn it to good. They take what would have been what we would consider, um, you know, a hardship, and, and they make use of it. He studied theology. He increased his prayer life. He thought about what was most important, and it was that time in prison as a young man of 26 years old, um, you know, he's married, he, he, I should be at home, you know, with my wife, etc. I'm in prison. He turned that around, and, and God used it to turn his life around, and ended up being this, this great hero and saint and champion for the church. And so this is going to be our example. If something right now is happening in your life, and you think this is a great disaster, and where is God, and how could he let this happen to me, we, we just never know. We always have the example of the cross. When the worst thing in the world that could happen, the worst thing in the universe, which is uh, uh, God being put to death on the cross, that became the best thing, and it was a redemption of mankind. So whatever, whatever is happening to you right now, whatever has happened in the past, whatever may happen in the future, when we turn and give it to God, when we turn to God in that moment and do not hold on to bitterness and do not feel sorry for ourselves or at least fight against it, and we just seek to do, well, what can I do? I can't do anything, but I can study theology. I can't do anything, but, but I can serve my family. I can't do anything, but, but I can love God and I can pray. We can always do those things. We can always do that. And, and, and who knows what God is going to bring out of that. That could change our life. Our life might just continue. But maybe our prayers, our acceptance of that suffering, maybe that gives somebody else the grace to change their life. And then something else happens. Uh, so, so we just don't know. We never know what God can do. He can do all things. He's got all power. Uh, we, we can be so very confident uh, in, in God's power and the fact that God is um, you know, looking over each one of us very, very carefully. As it says in the Psalms, the death of the righteous is precious in the eyes of God. Uh, he's not going to let anything happen to us that, that he can't turn to good if we give it to him first. Uh, so let that be our example, and especially during this time as we're approaching uh, Holy Week, right, where, where Christ himself gives us that example for all time. Let us follow the example of Christ, follow the example of saints, Always give our misfortunes to God and, 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 and just let him do with it as he wills. Uh, St. John of Capistrano, pray for us, and God bless you all. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.